Here we are again, continuing our discussion of heap files in relational database systems, in this case, PostgreSQL. Recall that this was the point of our discussion when we finished the last video. So, uh, files, heap files are used, I'm sorry, heap files are used on, uh, on disk to store the contents of the rows of such a relational table. All right, okay, so row contents of a relational table correspond with heap files on disk. Um, let's take a closer look at these files, where they reside and how they are structured. So heap files are really regular files that uh, that the, the operating system stores in a particular file system location in your operating system. There is nothing special about these heap files, actually. We can use regular tools to inspect these, uh, to understand these, to corrupt these, so caveat. Uh, so uh, let's use these tools of the operating system to peek inside these files and see what we can find there. First of all, where do we find these heap files? Where does PostgreSQL store these files in the, in the uh, operating system uh, file system? And the answer to that is actually very simple. It's behind this system controlled variable in PostgreSQL, the data directory variable. Um, if we show that uh, in our PostgreSQL shell or from the editor here, let me do that. Um, here we go again. This is my editor. Let's evaluate this particular query to reveal the data directory of PostgreSQL. Then we'll find, okay, so this is the particular directory that PostgreSQL uses to store the heap files. Let's copy that. I have that. And let's copy it down inside the shell here and let's go there. Let's go there. I'm using quotes here because there are spaces in the file name. Okay, so let's go there. Okay, there we are. Um, and because I know the roots of the game, I know that all these heap files actually reside in a subdirectory of this. It's in the base subdirectory. Okay, so let's see what we can find there. Uh, list the files. Okay, how many files already? Okay, so all these system named, obviously files named by PostgreSQL, hard to spot what's actually behind these. But uh, let me tell you that all these these directories, all these number directories, really represent one database that we've stored. Which database? Well, PostgreSQL itself can tell us. So uh, let's use this very simple SQL query that we evaluate against the table pg underscore database. This is one table that not we have created, but the system maintains for us in its so-called system catalog, a system internal table in which PostgreSQL uh, takes note about which database exists and which internal, internal identifier, these numbers, which internal identifier has been assigned to each of these databases. The system, the DBMS, uses tables themselves to organize its own internals. So eat your own dog food in a sense. Uh, PostgreSQL uses relational structures to, main, to maintain its own internals. That's uh, quite reassuring, I would say. So let's see what kind of databases we can find in my system uh, as of now. Let's evaluate that. Okay, uh, quite a number of databases. Ray, superficial indexing, TPCH looks interesting to me, but we've been using the Scratch database in the last few uh, videos. So a Scratch database is assigned the number 16386. 16386, this is the Scratch database, 16386. Let's go there. So now we are in the subdirectory in the file system that contains the heap files for the Scratch database. And let's see what we can find there. Okay, quite a number of files, all of these numbered again and having strange suffixes. Of course, these are system generated names again. Okay. We were talking about the unary table, the unary table uh, in the last videos, if you recall, this, the single column table unary with column A. 
in which of these heap files, in which of these heap files would be the contents of the unary table A? Which of these identifiers are associated with the table unary? And again, we can use PostgreSQL's uh, system catalog to answer this particular uh, question. In this time, we are looking at this uh, system catalog table PG underscore class. We will dump the relation names, the table names known to this uh, to the system, and also the name of the heap file, the rel file node, the name of the heap file that is used to store the rows of this particular table. Okay, so let's evaluate that. Okay, quite a number of tables stored inside my databases. Uh, yeah, interesting stuff there. Water, wards. Okay, we have to look at this later on. But uh, we are looking for unary, 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 unary. Okay, unary. There's unary table held in file 72983. 72983. Okay. Um, yeah, so let's peek inside that file. Unary is a table of 100 rows containing the 100 integers from 1 to 100. Let's see if we can look inside this file. Okay, so we are using a hex time editor. We don't expect much interesting uh, structure there. So this is the right identifier. Let's dump that. Okay, gibberish. Uh, as I as I was uh, being afraid of, just a gibberish, gibberish of files, eight kilobytes of gibberish. Uh, we can uh, we can scroll that, but uh, it doesn't get any better here. It's uh, that's this is the contents of the heap file. Of course, PostgreSQL controlled. Whether this is really the contents of the unary table is really hard to tell. It would probably be much easier to tell if the contents would be more revealing, not the integers from one to one hundred, but textual values, for example. So let's do that. Let's do that. Let's create a unary-like table. Let's call it unary prime. You see, I'm using the SQL convention of enclosing names in double quotes, in double quotes if they contain funny characters like spaces or apostrophes. Okay, so uh, let's create a table unary prime that just looks like unary, but has a single column A of textual values, not integers, but textual values. Okay, so let's create that. Okay, there you go, a new table, unary prime. And this time we have to insert textual values. This will be the textual values that we are inserting. We should be, it should be easy to find these particular values inside the hex stump for the associated file, unless PostgreSQL uses some clever uh, compression or encoding technique, but this is not the case as I can spoil already. Okay, so let's insert these four cool values. Inserted, zero rejected. Uh, let's see the contents. Yes, all right. So, seminal Star Wars characters collected in table unary prime. Okay. So, which file, which file out there in the operating system, file system, corresponds to unary prime, to the file, to the table unary prime? Let's find out. Let's look inside, inside the system catalog and look for the row that really encode relates to the table unary prime. There you go. Okay. So obviously it's uh, file 72986, 72986 that uh, we have to look at. Let's first make sure that the contents of the files really reflect the contents of what the database thinks should be there. We can talk about this particular command later on. But uh, now the state of the file system should be just the state of the, the table contents. Very nice. So, okay, of course, 72986, hex dump, 72986. All right, okay. So we're looking at the contents of this particular file. It contains a lot of zeros. That's why the hex dump here really skips ahead in the, in the hex dump output. But at the, at the very end of the file, at the very end of these eight kilobytes, we are finding Yoda and Han Solo and Leia and Luke. Okay, so this operating system file, 72986, 
obviously really contains the contents of the <clears throat> table urinary prime. We found it, a correspondence between table contents and heap file contents. I told you before that a heap file is a very simple structure and doesn't provide any value-based access. We cannot use row values to navigate inside the file and then uh, pick out particular rows to, to extract them from such a heap file. But that doesn't mean that we have no orientation at all in such a heap file. Once we have navigated to a particular row in, in any way whatsoever, um, we have a means to come back to this row later. To, I to identify, to refer to one particular row in such a heap file and then come back to it later, access it, access it again, maybe modify it and so on. And the means that PostgreSQL is using for that are the so-called row identifiers. Each row in a heap file is equipped with its row identifier or RID. And we can use that RID to really directly locate a row, talk about a row, particular row in a heap file. Our IDs or RIDs are really unique, they're real identifiers. If there are two rows in a heap file, R1 and R2, they will never, they will never agree in their RIDs. The RIDs of R1 and R2 will always be different. Even if the contents, even if all the column values, <coughs> the cell values held in R1 and R2 are identical, this could be the case in a keyless table, their row identifiers will be different. We can use the RIDs to tell the rows R1 and R2 apart. And the best thing is the RIDs are not arbitrary. They really encode the location, the location of this particular row inside the heap file. You give me RID R, I can use that information to very quickly locate the location of row R inside its heap file. No sequential scan would be necessary uh, would be required to access that particular row R. Okay. Even if we change the contents of the of the row R, even if the row R has to be moved inside the file, maybe because it's compacted or vacuumed, the RID, its RID remains stable. Once we learn about the RID, the read of a particular row R, we can use it from now on to refer to it. So it's just, it's really not the relational keys that we are talking about here. Um, um, a relational key may change for a row, the RID of a row will not change normally, and we can use it in the future to refer to this particular row. To explore that concept, to explore that concept, let's create uh, a new table unary, a larger table unary now. Okay, so let's switch back to the editor. Okay, uh, we had table unary before, that's nice. We will we we'll keep it, but we will throw all its contents using the truncate command. Now there is no row stored in the unary table, uh, but we will populate it again, this time with 1000 rows. So generate series uh, is being used, generate values from one up to 1000 in a step width of one. This will lead to 1000 rows inserted into table unary. Let's do that. There you go. 1000 rows inserted into table unary. Okay. So what is the file? What is the file that is now associated with our table unary? What's the heap file name? Let's see that. 72992, all right. 72992, okay, let's see. And there you go, 72992, that's a file of about 40 kilobytes that has been allocated. 1322, that's uh, the current time. So this is really a new file that has just been allocated, about 40 kilobytes held in this particular file for us. So we were talking about these row IDs. Uh, can we actually look at them? Can we can we peek inside the internals of DB2 to reveal these row IDs? And the answer is yes, we can. We can do that. 
we can have um, PostgreSQL reveal the R IDs of the of the particular rows. Normally, this would be considered internal information and thus uh, hidden from the users. But uh, um, there's a pseudo column, a column that's not actually stored but can be used, referred to in queries, and then uh, and then exposed when we when we perform a SQL query like this, for example. I'm sorry. All right, here we go. Like this query, for example. Uh, this query refers to a particular column that's not actually stored. It's the pseudo column CTID, and it will contain and reveal the row IDs of the particular row U that we are looking at. And you see a sample output of uh, this larger unary, the 1000 row unary table here on the right hand side. This query will dump two columns. It will dump 1000 rows with two columns. This is the usual table contents. These are the row IDs, the row IDs of the 1000 rows that have been uh, have been stored in this particular table unary. Okay, so this is information. These pairs are the row IDs and these pairs contain enough sufficient information to quickly locate one particular row. Uh, row carrying the value 228 has been assigned the RID 1,2. If you know this word, uh, this value 1,2, this row ID, you can use it later on to identify and locate this particular row inside the heap file in a very quick and efficient fashion. So let's do that in our example. Uh, this is the unary table in its row IDs. Okay, so I would like to focus on this first component of the row IDs here. It starts out with a zero and then grows, 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 starts off with zero and grows and then will finally switch over to one, I guess. There are we are with one and then if we scroll down the table, it will be two and three and four until we reach the bottom of the table. Okay. So these are the row IDs assigned to the rows of this particular table unary. What's the meaning? What's the meaning of these two components of the pair? That's actually very simple. It's actually very simple. Uh, the first component that we were looking at is the so-called page number. And the page number, it, uh, or p page number p that we that we are that we are looking at here is uh, is indicating a contiguous block of bytes inside the heap file a contiguous block of bytes or a page inside the heap file all rows with this, the same page number say page number 0 or page number 4 are residing on the same page 0 or 4 and are thus physically adjacent in a contiguous block of bytes stored inside the heap file. Two rows having the same page number, the first, first component in this row ID, the, first, the same page number P, will be physically close to each other inside the heap file. Okay, so just how large these blocks are, how large these pages are, uh, um, that's a system dependent and configurable uh, uh, number uh, throughout the lecture, we will call that particular size B, capital B. And uh, normally in, in current systems, you will find page sizes or block sizes B of about 4 to 64 kilobytes. The PostgreSQL default, and it's also the version I'm running, uh, the, the, the page size I'm running here inside uh, my installation, is 8 kilobytes. So we can view such a heap file on disk as being partitioned, as being uh, subdivided into such pages or eight kilobyte size blocks. And in this first eight kilobyte page, it's the page number zero, there will, there will be a number of rows stored. Once this eight kilobyte page uh, is filled with rows, we will have to grow the heap file allocate a new page or append a new page number one, it will again have 
eight kilobyte of space to store another batch of rows until it has been filled and we have to switch over to the second uh, to the second page and so on these in the, the rows in uh, in uh, in page 0 will be at file offset 0 the rows at page 1 will be at file offset 8192 which corresponds to the 8 kilobyte size i was referring to earlier so every Every row stored in this page P equals 1, for example, will be held in the heap file between offsets 8192 and 16383. Okay, so they will be physically contiguous and adjacent to each other. There's a command. Uh, there's a command in in PostgreSQL with which we can reveal all these uh, system dependent configuration parameters. For example, like the block size uh, that has been has been configured, and it's called PG Control Data. So let's see whether we can. Whether we can call that command. I need the data directory again. Let me review the data directory again. Okay. We have the data directory. Let me copy that. Okay. And then call PG control data on this particular data directory. And we will see a dump of interesting information there. All right. Quite a number of, of interesting stuff. For example, the version number of PostgreSQL we are using, it's uh, 12. Point one, so we can see that encoded here all other uh, pieces of interesting information here but we've scrolled by the interesting bits already here you can see okay so the database block size the capital B indeed is 8192 that's 8 kilobytes okay so this copy of PostgreSQL operates with blocks or page sizes of way, uh, 8 kilobytes and this particular value tells us that inside a single heap file, inside a single heap file, you will find this many, this many blocks. This is the largest size of a heap file. Any table that would exceed this particular size would be subdivided in several heap files uh, inside the operating system file system. Uh, so how large would that be? Let's see. Um, um, well, it's uh, okay. Yeah, okay. So that's quite a many. It's quite many bits we can store in uh, inside a file. Let's convert that to gigabytes. One. So one gigabyte per heap file. Any table that has to store information that exceeds this one gigabyte will be subdivided into several heap files. Okay. So as I told you, heap files are read and read, uh, are subdivided in these eight kilobyte pages. And actually, that's also the unit in which these files will be read and written. Whenever accesses to such a file happen, then not a single byte will be read, or a single byte or row even will be written and read, but always a whole unit, a page unit, eight kilobytes in this case, will be accessed, read, and written. And why this is the case will be the focus of the upcoming video. So heap files, they always grow and shrink, are accessed, namely read and written in these eight kilobyte page sizes. So this is really one of the central configuration parameters of such a relational page-based database system. You've heard me calling these uh, these pages uh, pages or blocks, and that's because these two concepts are actually tightly related. The database people, um, the database people tend to refer to these eight kilobyte units as pages. The operating system people will probably refer to these units as blocks. You can use both. I will use both, as you've uh, noticed inside the, in, in, uh, during this course. Um, pages and blocks should be synonyms uh, while we talk about 
these courses. And this is also the unit in which information transfer between the disk and the RAM will happen. We will never move individual bytes. Okay. Uh, and why this is the case is exactly the topic of the upcoming uh, uh, videos that we will produce for you. Okay. Uh, so long. Take care and see you soon.